Each project starts with someone that has an idea. This module is about that moment in the project management life cycle. But even before the idea, there is an organizational issue that needs some attention. And while the manager or the person is thinking about it, he gets an idea how to tackle this situation, how to tackle this specific organizational issue. An idea can be another way of working, moving to a different office, developing a new product, a marketing campaign, a training program, a renovation, the purchase of a piece of software, or perhaps a structural solution to wastage in the production line. The person with the idea need to answer two important questions. First, is it a project or a small job? This is an important question. And the second question you need to answer is, shall I do it or shall I delegate it to somebody else? In answering the first question, something is a project when something is of strategic importance. There are a number of different specialists that are required. The work cannot be done as part of the daily routine. Both time and money are important. And finally, we came to the conclusion that for this work we need extra management attention. When the answer to these questions is yes, you should consider to solve this as a project. Then what about the question, are you going to do it yourself or are you going to delegate it? If you are going to do it yourself, you can do that because you think it's very important that you are the one that are, is doing the management. But realize that when you are doing this, you will be wearing many different hats. You have many different, sometimes conflicting responsibilities. And you will probably become extremely busy. So what about delegating? You need to delegate it to someone and in this delegation process you need to give the other person enough mandate. You give away something of your personal power. But that someone takes the work out of your hands, so it gives you time to do other things. And the other person can give the project its full attention. So probably it will be, be better managed than when you would do it on yourself. But if it's not a complex project, you can really try to do it yourself. It, probably it will work. Project management, what you need to realize is a role, just as project sponsor is. The moment that you delegate the project to a project manager, you are the project sponsor and the project manager is performing the role of project manager. When you delegate the project management of the project to a project manager, you need to ensure that there is enough mandate. You need to organize that and you need to record it. Now in this written document, you describe the goal of the project. Then you describe the required result. So what is the project going to deliver and what should the organization be able to do with it. Then we write down the responsibilities of the project manager and of course the authority the project manager has. You put on the constraints on the project. These are the things that the project manager need to keep in mind when developing the project plan. Then um, we break the project up in moments where we can decide if we want to go on or if we want to stop. This is doing the phasing of the project. 
we need to make a distinction of three important concepts. The first thing is that the project delivers something. This is the project output or the project result. For example, it delivers a customer relationship system, a piece of software, and then the organization is going to use it, and because of that, the customers are better served. This is the end result. And then finally, the organization reaps an increase in turnover, and these are the benefits. So we have three concepts, the project output, the result. This is what a project manager is delivering. The end result, this is the effect of what is going to happen when the organization is going to use this delivery of the project. And finally, the benefits that are reaped by the organization because of this end result. Now, the benefits and the end result together, this is the project goal. When delegating responsibilities, we really need to describe them accurately because responsibilities they require authority now the questions you need to answer is what are you going to delegate and where are you going to let people to assist you in doing the work let me give an example we can use for that a responsibility matrix here we see for example the negotiation with the suppliers is delegated by the project sponsor through the project manager who is actually doing the negotiation and the team members are advising the project manager in this whole process. When we look at the signing of the contract, this is something that is done by the project sponsor and he has advised by the project manager. And the end result of the signing of the contract, the team members are informed about that. Here we see how we can use a table to make very clear what responsibilities and what authority there is in the specific activities on the project. I already mentioned the so-called constraints. Now constraints are con criteria from the project sponsor to the project manager. Here we are answering the questions when must it be ready when should be the ideal delivery date and what is the budget within the project manager should uh, come up with his plan what must it be able to do the result the end result of the project and what other kind of things the project manager has to take account of when developing his plan When it takes some time, there is a lot of uncertainty in a project. We solve this by using specific phases in the project, distinct phases. Well, in a way, we have the idea stage, and in that stage, after we have developed the idea, we have a go decision if we're going to actually make a plan of it. When we have made a plan, we make a go decision if we are willing to proceed with the project, then we are doing the execution stages of the project. And when this takes some time, we often divide this into different stages uh, also. For example, we have a design stage. At the end of the design stage, we decide we start building the design. At the end of the building, we start and we're going to test it. And at the end of the test, uh, we decide uh, how we are going to proceed. Now you can see the more uncertain a project is, the more phases we introduce. Finally, um, we decide at the end of each stage if we want to go on. So this gives uh, the upper management of the organization enough uh, instruments to control the project. And at the end we deliver and then when it is finished we have a close out where we formally close out the project. We do some evaluation, we stop all the contracts that are and then we can go through the huges, the deployment of the project result. So this staging thing is really a good instrument to manage the uncertainty there is on the project because at each stage and the management has the opportunity to stop or to go on or to bring in some changes.